to the Work Wonders podcast, brought to you by Asta HR, where we simplify the human side of business. I'm Angela. And I'm Susan. Let's dive into today's episode and find out what you've been wondering about. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about all the tools that we use behind the scenes, the things that can be used by HR professionals and by yourselves in your business once you're aware of them. So let's hear more. Hi, Susan. Hi, Angela. So we're unlocking the door today. We're going to give people a bit of a view into the the innards, insides That's of Asta right. HR. A peek below the bonnet, peek yeah. under the bonnet. Yeah. Or, yes. There's lots of things that we use that help inform what we do and how we flesh out the information we have for our clients. Just like any professional trade, there's tricks, tricks and tools. There is. Mm. HR's no different. And although you might think, you know, wow, you've got to be a professional to use these tools, some of them you don't. Okay, so we've got six tools we're going to talk about today. Uh So let's get stuck in and go through them. So the first one is what we would call probably affectionately a HRIS system or a human resources information system, basically just a database. Yeah, exactly. Another sort of iteration of that is an applicant tracking system or like a recruitment system. It's just, just about recruitment mm. um, database. But these sort of systems, what would we use them for? Everything, if we can. Yeah. I mean, this is a way of out, outsourcing our brains, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just as you need to have business records on the finance side, you need business records on the people side. Yeah. And I think we've spoken before about the sort of record keeping that yeah. you, you need to do regarding that. And an HRIS helps you with that, whereas the ATS or Applicant Tracking System is what we need to help us keep track of candidates. Now, Angela, you recently dealt with a recruitment for an admin role. I did, yeah. We were recently recruiting an admin for a client and um, just keep things tight. How many applicants were there? Oh, gosh, we had over 200. So when we get to those sort of numbers, nobody can hold that information. No. And a spreadsheet is just not going to cut it. No. And it takes away a lot of the manual processes if you have a database or an online system. Mm. Mm. It can automate certain things, but it can also help you, for example, search throughout the database for a particular skill and things like that. It can really take time off when you've got that many, that much data to work through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it also means that two people can work on or more. Mm can work on a recruitment campaign at the same time and see what the other person's done. Absolutely. So that's what we do because it allows us to leave notes for each other, to move candidates along through the process and anyone can pick it up and see where they're up to. Yeah, you're right. A HRIS can have a recruitment element to Mm. it. Often sometimes they might have different, I think they call them modules. Yeah, exactly. So they might have the training module and the work health and safety module and so on. Um, You can have all of them. But fundamentally, like you say, it's it's housing all that information about your employees, when they started, when they need a review, any notes in the system, I guess performance management, all that sort of thing housed in one place. Exactly. So it then becomes your one source yeah. of the truth, basically. Yeah. Of course, any system, and that will apply to any software that you use, is only as good as the information you put in yes. there. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the old garbage in, garbage out, as I used to say when I was using IT and you know, getting learning all that stuff. So yes, it's the quality of the information you put in, but it's also if you're looking to work with that sort of system yourself in your business, being very clear about what you want, what yeah. the end product's going to be. What you're gonna use it for, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. You can have something with all the bells and whistles, but you might only need the bells. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah you can so often find one to customise it for what you need, yeah. So it's about right-sizing to what your business needs. Yeah. The other thing I just wanted to mention in passing is data. Yeah. yeah, There's so much that you can learn once you start collecting data in terms of, you know, your turnover, yeah. in terms of if we're looking at applicant tracking systems, we're looking at... You know, how long does it take to fill a role? So much information that yeah. is going to help you manage better. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Oh, I love that. The metrics, we could go into that all day. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's another episode, I think. But our next tool is assessment tools. Yeah, more data. <laughs> <laughs> it is. 
Now, we use these to really deep dive into specific things, um, mm-hmm. whether it be a concern or development area for someone, really understanding more. We've used it in recruitment as well. Mm-hmm. Everything under this banner, we're t- look, there's lots under this banner, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there's plenty tool. of options. But we're thinking, you know, whether it's a disc assessment or we use the Harrison, lots of different ones that you could use really. There's plenty out there on the market. What would you say these are best used for? Well, recruitment, of course, yeah. is an obvious one. Um, helping you to fit the right characteristics of a candidate to yeah. what you actually want in the role. But, of course, there's a lot of other ways to use it. As you mentioned, in helping develop a person, helping them to identify Areas that they might benefit from coaching or yep. further training in can be very helpful for that. Can it be helpful for career planning? So how can this person develop the skills they need to move into the next role? The other thing we love using, Harrison assessments at least, and DISC actually if it comes yeah. to that, is in working with teams. Yes. So it's a fabulous way to take a shortcut really to seeing how that team's operating. And a skilled person using any of these tools will be able to give you an assessment of the team, where the gaps are, what can be done to improve those gaps, be they in communication or in strategy or any of the other bits and pieces uh, that are important for you to have on your team. So the power in those sorts of tools is really being able to implement the information that comes out of them. Oh, yeah. Which is where where our strengths lie. So... Um, With our clients, we really deep dive into that result and helping them interpret that information and use it effectively. Absolutely. Anyone can go and find a free assessment tool (laughs) online, but it's knowing how to skillfully interpret that and also how to communicate the results to the person and to their manager in a way that's positive and works to that person's strengths rather than focusing on their weaknesses. Third one, yes, templates. We love a good form and a template <laughs> in HR. Earlier on in my career, I remember people going, oh, HR, you're all about the forms. Yeah. <laughs> well, the forms, the policies, the whatever. <laughs> I only recently realised that police and policies oh. are, are related to words. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Very, very similar. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that before. So um, HR, we're not the police. But we do like consistency and that's why we like template. So our third tool is definitely to use templates. Why not? You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Use a template for things like policies, like you're saying, job descriptions, letters of offer, Mm -hmm. letters of variation to various things or even a performance improvement plan, all those sorts of things you can have template forms for. Yeah, forms, forms, forms. They're really so useful. Yeah. Helps to standardise things, doesn't it? Exactly. And even, you know, to the extent of you know, someone says, Well, we need a XYZ type worker. Yeah, you know, well, what is that? You know, and asking them to justify to you why they need an extra body. Yeah. You could use a form for that. Yes, you could. And it takes the emotion out of it a bit. Yeah. You know? And you could use them online. You know, it could be oh, yeah. a, a Teams form or a Google form mm. or Google Doc, whatever they mm. are. Mm. Um, doesn't have to be a physical printed out form. And it's amazing how easy it is to set those things up yeah. now. And with things like a job description, it helps to standardise. Let's say you wanted to always include, you know, everyone needs to follow the policies and procedures or everyone needs to, you know, help contribute to a safe workplace. Mm. Those sorts of things that are going to be for everyone to mm. look after. If that's put in a template, job done. You don't have to keep remembering to Saves do that Saves you so much time. time. And even on um, job advertisements. Yeah. A template for your job ads That's true. so that uh, candidates get a consistent message about the organisation. Yeah. So go the templates. Yeah. Did you know that we have lots of free resources available to you on our website? Things like templates that you could download or a checklist for a process or even recordings of our previous workshops. If you're looking for help in a particular area or just some inspiration, check out the resources page on our website astahr.com.au. And now it's back to the episode. The fourth tool we wanted to talk about today was timesheet software. Mm -hmm. Angela's the expert on payroll and timesheets and all things related, and I'm always happy to hand over to her to talk about that. (laughs) Well, look, payroll can be really complex. 
especially when you're thinking about someone like a shift worker. Mm -hmm. So our shift workers are people that their hours are up and down from week to week and it changes. But more importantly, their pay rates or penalty rates sort of change depending on what day of the week or what time of the day they're working. So that can be really hard to store all that information, just even from week to week, especially if you have like more than one or two (laughs) staff, (laughs) that can be really full on. So a timesheet software will take all that off your hands. Okay. So ideally employees would log in, you know, with a mobile device or whatever it be, and they would clock in and clock out or they can record their times, but it basically integrates with your award. It can integrate with your payroll software to make for a really smooth transition of all that information so nothing's missed. So all those rates are already built in. Yeah. There's no manual calculation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that works out better for the staff. Yep, absolutely. And if they've and got for your business yeah. owner, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And if the employees have access to that system or mm-hmm. um, you know, even leave management pay slips to update their contact information can all be housed in that system. So it's really helpful that way as well. So to listeners who might be using manual sh- timesheets yeah. now to do that and waiting for the staff to get yep. the timesheet in and there's always that hassle of trying to get that done, I'm hearing that you would recommend a digital solution for I would, yeah. Just explore what's out there, what you're currently using for payroll and if there's something attached in that system or whether you need yeah. something more sophisticated and, uh, and yeah, they're, they're not too expensive either. You mm. pay per user usually, mm-hmm. um, but they're usually pretty reasonable. Yeah. And I'll also flag that the first systems that we were talking about earlier, the HRIS, yep. some of them come with that option oh, yes, already good point. built in. What are we up to? Five? Yeah. Okay. Our fifth one, well, more and more people are working remotely. That's no surprise. Like us. Yes, we are. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you have a tool to keep teams communicating and keep them collaborating. Do you think most businesses do use them now? I would hope so. So, you know, if you're looking at something like Teams or Slack or Asana um, to manage projects, there are so many different team collaboration apps out there. Since I started working with Angela and Aster HR, we're in the whole Microsoft environment. So there are so many tools in there, but I'm... I'm reluctant to plug <laughs> just Microsoft okay. because there are other options uh, around, but I think it is useful uh, to understand the capacity there. Yeah. So the power for it, I think, lies within being able to communicate in one place um, and having a tool that allows very simple communication to happen. I think we chat quite often mm. in the system that we use. Um, I know we can even add on certain things to sort of give each other a kudos or, yeah. you know, feedback or whatever it is um, to sort of bring a bit of lightness to the to the team arena as well. And being able to call via we can. the app. Yeah. Set up a meeting in real time if yep. we need to discuss something. Yep. And, of course – Sharing files. Yes. I was going to say in keeping track of things that we're both working on, if there's Mm. a particular project, keeping our um, sort of strategy of what steps we need to do next. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Keeping that in the same place for each other. So we've got our files together, our communication and also our project planning. Yeah. Yeah. Such as for this podcast. It's got its own plan set up that we can both edit that information to. There's a lot of different ways of improving that collaboration yeah. with the team and also, I've, well, of course, vital is the calendar. Oh, yes, yeah. And also using the calendar effectively so that you know where people are. Mm. So being able to share calendars and so we know when you can talk to someone, when you can't, yeah. et cetera. Our system even shows when you're on the phone or if you're just busy in a meeting or whether mm. you're free. Yeah. Um, so that's a handy as well to know whether it's okay to call someone just quick and those sorts of things can really go a long way for remote teams. Yeah, so it feels like we're raving on a bit about this, <laughs> but it's something we use every single yeah. day. And if you need help with looking at you know, how you could collaborate better with your remote team um, and communicate better with them, yeah. then we'd be happy to help out. Yeah. All right. We're nearly there. I think we've got one more we can offer. Oh, yeah? Onboarding or a training system. And again, this might link yeah. back to a HRIS. Often could. Often have that module. But you could have it separately. Yeah. 
So one that I'm familiar with, they allow for, um, obviously you have your, your staff have access to it, but it allows for, again, a standardised process of onboarding mm-hmm. um, or even sharing some training. So if there's something particularly that you do with a new staff member right before they begin or when you're inducting them, you know, yeah. showing them around the policies and different things like that, a system online to do that can be really helpful, again, with remote staff. Yeah, absolutely. I would also say if there's something that you do every single time, record it. Yes. You know, make a quick screen capture video. Save yourself the time. Exactly. (laughs) Put it in the system. Then, you know, everyone's getting a consistent message about how that's done. And it might be as simple as how do we change the ink in the photocopier? Yeah. Yeah. Or um, how does the coffee machine work? Yeah. (laughs) Very Which are important. both essential things <laughs> to know when you first start in a role. Or how to access your pay slip. Uh, yeah. Things like that. Good really one. basic things. Yeah. yeah. So I would suggest if you're, you don't have a system in place for that, sit down and work out what it is people need to know yeah. to get as quickly as possible to being productive employees yeah. with you. And that will save you both time and money because they'll get up to speed faster, so they'll be more productive faster. But it'll also diminish the time that other people have to spend showing them how to do things. It's about not having to do the same thing over and over yeah. again and saving yourself that time, so that's a good one. Yeah, make it easy on yourself. Well, has any of that been of help for you today? Or maybe there's one that you're already using, maybe all of them. As you can see with these systems, there's a lot of benefits to be had if you want to implement one or all, or all of them. So if you want to look further into any of the things that we've talked about, we'll add a list to the website of what we've been talking about, probably some of the uh, links to some of the tools we've mentioned just so that you can get a better grasp on them. So that's a little sneak peek into our world, isn't it, Susan? I guess so. (laughs) And if you're thinking any of that can help you, then get in touch. Yeah, please do. You can reach out to us on astahr.com.au and book a call with either Susan or I. Um, But let us know on our LinkedIn page. Comment on today's post about the episode and let us know what are the tricks to the trade in your business. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Good idea, Angela. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Work Wonders podcast brought to you by Asta HR. Hit the subscribe button now to never miss an episode. And if you'd like to continue the conversation with us, you can find us over at astahr.com.au. See you in the next episode.